Memory isn't probably the right word. Storage device is more like it. A magnetic tape or a magnetic disc or a phonograph record don't really remember information. They just store it. Now, discs are neater to use because you can drop the needle at any point to pick up information. But you still have to wait for the record to come around again. A truly random access memory, one where you can get to any bit at any time, usually has no moving parts. The granddaddy of them all is a core memory has a whole bunch of little circular uh, pieces of magnetic material, kind of shaped like donuts, threaded into a grid pattern. Uh, this one has about 4,000 or so, but I have a, a, a simpler model. They're organized so that each core has got three wires running through it. it the whole organization is such that a current through any one wire won't magnetize those cores. But any core at the intersection of two wires with current in them does get mag uh, energized, magnetized. Now, that way, by picking uh, this, this wire and this wire, you can uh, record something on that core, you get the idea. To read out of the memory, another wire goes through every core in the entire thing, and when a current is passed again through that core, if there was information in there, a little bloop comes out of the sense line. It's as cumbersome as it looks, but it's very fast. And most of these things have to be threaded by hand. So since uh, the large-scale integration came along where the ability to put thousands of transistors on a little chip, other methods of doing the same thing have come along. The static random access memory, the static RAM, contains little circuits called flip-flops, each having several transistors as each little memory element, and enough circuitry so that you can access any one of them on the little chip. You access it and write the information into it, and it stays. You flip the flip-flop over to one state or you flop it over to the other. Uh, unfortunately, unlike the cores, when the power goes off, the information is lost. This is a capacitor. Some other memories called dynamic RAMs, dynamic random access memory, use tiny capacitors to store information. When you charge them up, they can remember that for a short period of time. What's dynamic about them? Well, Unfortunately, the tiny little capacitors can only remember the information for about a thousandth of a second. So unless they're constantly refreshed, they go as dead as a doornail. Still, they're much smaller and use fewer parts than the static random access memories. 4,000 bits of memory sounds like an awful lot. But if you think about it, just to digitize the information on a phonograph record would take, let's see, two and a half minutes times 60 seconds times... Uh, 30,000 samples per second, that's conservative, uh, times 8 bits in a sample, 36 million bits of information on your average phonograph record. So the serial access memories, uh, like tape and magnetic disks, aren't dead yet. How does television work? I haven't a clue. Electric.